This is the last example that we kind of skipped over in module 51. So we're gonna go ahead and cover that now. And it wants us to use the inverse of a matrix to solve the three by three system. Now remember, once I have this system and then the variable matrix equal to the constant matrix, I can apply the inverse on both sides to the left. And this will cancel each other out, leaving me with the variable matrix equal to the inverse of the augmented matrix times C, the constant matrix. So I need to figure out what A inverse is. So to do that, we have to set it up as A, the identity, and then convert it so that the left-hand side is the identity, and what we're left with on the right-hand side will be the inverse. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this one going. Now, I don't particularly like fractions, so I noticed that all of the rows have a denominator of five. So before I even continue, I'm gonna automatically do five times row one, five times row two, and five times row three, just so that I can get rid of all of those fractions, and then it's easier to look at. So this will just be four, negative one, one, but over here it'd be five, zero, zero. And then the second row would be negative two, negative two, negative three, and then zero, five, zero. And the bottom would be negative seven, eight, two, and then on the right hand side it'd be zero, zero, five. Now well, that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to look at. So let's go ahead and start trying to do our um, Gauss chart. Ad. So this needs to be a one. So we're going to do one fourth times row one to get a new row one. And that will be one negative one fourth, one fourth, five fourths, zero zero and the other rows are going to stay the same for now excuse me now we're going to use that one to turn these two guys into zeros so to turn row two value into zero we're going to have to do positive two times row one plus row two to eliminate this variable and get a zero in row two. Then for here, we're gonna need that to be a positive seven and combine it with row three so that I can eliminate this variable and replace it with row three. So let's do the math here on the side. Um, two times row one is going to be two, negative half, one half, five halves, zero, zero. And then row two goes underneath. And so we end up with zero, negative five halves, negative five halves, five halves, five, and zero. And then now when I do the bottom one, I'm gonna take row one and multiply it by seven. So I'm gonna have, so this is my row one, right? I'm gonna have seven and negative seven fourths, seven fourths, 35 fourths, zero, zero. And then row three goes underneath
And so here we get zero. Um, this one I'm actually going to type in the calculator. I could do it in my head, but I'm getting a little lazy right now. So let's see. Uh, we get 25 over 4. Here we get 15 over 4. That's 35 over 4, 0, and 5. And this is row 3 now. So let me rewrite my matrix. We now have row 1, which is staying the same. It looks like I'm running out of ink on my pin here. So let me go grab another pin. Here we go. Much better. So let's see. Row one, or I'm sorry, this should have been row two, not row one, right? When I did this operation, I should have replaced my row two. So row two is going to be these values. Oops, that should be a five. And then a zero. And then row three is down here. Okay, now we are going to change this next diagonal guy to a one. So how do we do that? We do the reciprocal times row two to get a new row two. So what do we have now? We have zero still, positive one, positive one, negative one, negative two, and zero. And then now let's go ahead and use that one to change this value and 25 over four to zeros. So to do that, we're going to have to multiply row two times a positive one fourth, add it to row one to get a new row one. And then for the bottom, we're gonna have to take negative 25 over four row two plus row three to get a new row three. And so we'll do those um, operations over here on the side. So one fourth times row two would be zero, one fourth, one fourth, negative one fourth, negative one half, and zero. If I add row one underneath that, let's see what we get. So we have one, zero, two fourths, which is one half, um, four fourths, which is just one, negative one half, and zero. So this is my new row one. Now if I do negative 25 over four times row two, I'm gonna get zero, negative 25 over four, negative 25 over four, um, positive 25 over 4, positive 50, or 25 over 2, and then 0. And then row 3 will go underneath, so I will have 15 over 4, 35 over 4, 0, and 5. And if I combine those, I get 0. Here I'll get negative 10 over 4, which is negative 5 over 2. Here I will get 60 over 4, which is, I believe, 15. Let me double check. Clear. 60 over 4. Yes, 15. 25 over 2 and 5. And this is my new row 3. So I have row one now. I have row two, which is gonna stay the same. 
I have row three. And there we go. So now the next job is to turn this one into a one. So we're gonna do the reciprocal times row three to get a new row three. And so what do we end up with here? So we end up with zero, zero, one. And here we'll end up with a negative six. Here we'll end up with a negative five. And here we'll end up with a negative two. Now the next job is to use this one to change these two guys into zeros. So in order to eliminate this variable, we're gonna to have to use the negative one half times row three plus row one to get a new row one. And then to eliminate this variable, you're gonna to have to do negative one times row three plus row two to get a new row two. So let's do that work over here on the side. So zero, zero, negative one half. Um, this will be positive three, positive five halves, and positive one. And then row one goes underneath. So when I add those together, I'm gonna to get a new row one. One, zero, zero, four. That's four over two, which is two and one. Now do the other operations. These guys are gonna change signs. So one and zero, one and zero is gonna, or I'm sorry. Um, oh wait, I made a mistake when I was typing. That should be zero. See a zero here, and then for some reason I put a one there. So there we go, now we got it. So negative one times zero is zero, plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. Negative one plus one is zero. This would be positive six plus a negative one, which is positive five. This would be positive five plus a negative two, which is positive three. This would be a positive two plus zero, which is two. Row two, oh, that is supposed to be row two. I am sorry there. So row three is going to stay the same as it was, and row one I have over here on the side. So let's see what we get here. We get one, zero, zero, four, two, one. 0, 0, 1, negative 6, negative 5, negative 2. So now we know the inverse is going to be 4, 5, negative 6, 2, 3, negative 5, 1, 2, negative 2. But then how do we use that to um, solve the matrix, right? What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take A inverse and multiply it by our constant matrix. So our variable matrix, it looks like we have three columns. So these are X's, Y's, and Z's. So my variable matrix is going to have three variables. My inverse, I'm going to write down and then my constant matrix is going to come from the constants here. So negative nine, negative seven, and nine. And then I need to actually multiply these out. So let's keep this side the same. We're not doing anything with that side. And over here, we're gonna take these values and multiply them by these values. So we get negative 36 minus 14 plus nine. For the second row, we get negative 45 minus 21 plus 18. In the third row, we get positive 54, um, positive 35, and negative 18. And so what do we end up with here?
So let's see what we get here. Let me grab my calculator. We get negative 36 minus 14 plus 9 is negative. Oh, that's wrong. I put the wrong number. Negative 36 minus 14 plus 9 is negative 41. Negative 45 minus 21 plus 18. We get negative 48. And then 54 plus 35 minus 18, we get 71. So then x is equal to negative 41, y is equal to negative 48, and z is equal to 71. So our solution in point form would be negative 41, negative 48, and positive 71. And that's the end of this problem. So Kramer's rule was a lot shorter and a lot easier than this method. So although we have to learn this method, this would not be the method that I choose to use in um, on the final exam or anywhere. This is just a method that you have to learn because later these inverses will have a bigger impact and more um, functionality. So we're just kind of learning to get find them and kind of use them. Um, but once you get into like differential equations and linear algebra, that's where you'll really um, start to use these matrices, okay?